Hi, welcome to the Scribe Studio. I'm Mark Walker. I'm here with Nate Keefe. How are you, Nate? Good, thanks, Mark. I do it the same way every time. <laughs> uh, in this video, uh, Nate has prepared some information about a special topic around working with Dynamics GP and with Scribe Online. So, Nate, why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, your topic and why you think it's important. Yeah, I, I want to show you today on how you can extend out integrations with GP that maybe our connector hasn't gotten to yet. All right, so the connector comes with certain areas of GP or tables enabled, but you might want to integrate with something that's outside of that range of right. tables. So yeah. how do you do that? So you've figured out a way to make that yeah. work. That's so uh, the way that I've made it work is, is I'm working with uh, what's called eConnect. I'm sure people have heard of that. Yeah, it, it, that's basically, it's it's an interface in the GP right. so that other applications can talk to it. You right. know, it we're integrating through an API and that's going to be through eConnect. Okay. And uh, the way that we're going to do it is eConnect comes with these Microsoft uh, SQL Server stored procedures. Right. And so that just comes with, that's a part of the GP installation media. And those are used to get into GP to, to update, create, and delete records out of there. Uh, and that's, you know, including the business logic. So this is a good way to talk to GP. In right. Interface it's not it. like you're hitting the tables directly. You're working through the same application layer, if you will, of those stored procedures yeah. that the eConnect framework works with anyway. Right. And that's very similar. Well, our connector kind of does that under the covers, and so does the adapter that we have in Insight. Yeah. So it's all above board. Exactly. All right. Um, so kind of when considering what do I want to do, uh -huh. Uh, I know what I want to do, so now I need to make sure that eConnect can do that. And there's also, you know, the reason we built the connector is because we built a nice user-friendly connector. You could see all the nice table names right. and field names and metadata. Um, so these are actually pretty vaguely, you know, they're a little cryptic sometimes. The eConnect names are a little cryptic. Yeah, you're saying, yeah. yeah. Um, so actually, it's all documented on the MSDN site. So if you just go out and you search for eConnect, the XML node reference, you yep. could see the different modules that's out there okay. and what's available through it. Can I see what that looks like? Yeah. So we have uh, in the MSDN site, it looks a lot like this. So there's different modules out there, analytical accounting. Okay. I could go out and do you know fixed asset, GL. Right. Uh, the one I want to talk about today is, is sales order processing. So this is the eConnect documentation. And from this, you can figure out what store procedure you want to be working with. Exactly. If you know the module name of GP, that you're, which I'm sure people would know. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Uh, so obviously, we're going to be connecting in through our SQL Server connection, and there's a couple of different considerations right. you need to make there. Right. Okay. So the first thing to understand is is what Scribe Online does when it connects to an endpoint. It goes out, it takes the user privileges, and it says, "What what are all the tables I need? What are all the views? What are all the stored procedures?" Right. If you've ever looked in that company database, that's a lot. There's thousands. Right. Um, so we have a feature in our SQL Server connector that allows you to say, well, the, I only want stored procedures, and I only want these specific ones. So there's some kind of filtering that you can do when you're setting up the connection to yeah. SQL Server? Okay. Yeah, so a part of uh, that research ahead of time, let's figure out what I need, so I just show that. Uh, so the way that I connect in is I'll usually create two connections. I'll have one for my source, if I want to read from GP tables mm -hmm. or views, and I'll have one for my target okay. to use those stored procedures. So when you're in Scribe Online and you're creating a connection to mm -hmm. that SQL Server, I'll bring it up, there's two uh, parameters in here that you care about. So I'm connecting to, I'm connecting to TWL. Okay. That's my company database. And there's two, there's additional parameters and object filters. Okay. So in here, the way I have it set up is I'm allowing stored procedures, that's equals true, and I'm not allowing any views or tables. So right away, I, I killed you know one third of this or two thirds right. of this. Right, <laughs> you're trying to whittle down the list of the values you get. Yeah. So it makes the user interface in Scribe Online not so uh, complicated. Yeah. <laughs> now the other thing I did with the object filter is set. All right, for the store procedures that I want. Yeah. I want the ones that begin with Scribe Online, and mm -hmm. then I have a wildcard there, mm -hmm. and I want the ones that start with TASOP. So okay. Sales order processing yep. ones. And so when I test that connection and I actually use it inside of my mapping, you'll see it's really only those target operations and, and looking up values. Yep. So I have the execute block there too. So the execute block, if you're not familiar with that, mm -hmm. it's just a way for Scribe to send data to an application, a web service, you know, anything out there. So I can input data, the application will do what it needs with it. 
and come back as a success. So we're not telling it whether it's doing insert, update, delete, or seek or whatever. We just pass it the data and say execute, and because of what's receiving on the other end, it knows what it's supposed to do with it. Exactly. Okay. So the Z Connect start procedures, there'll be one specifically for updates, one for inserts, one for deletes. Okay. So again, I'm going to go over out to that XML node reference. I know that I want to work with uh, sales order processes. Mm -hmm. And so if I want to go out and create an invoice, there's a specific uh, start procedure for creating the header and one for creating the lines. Okay. So I went out, I know the names of those, SOP header invoice insert, mm -hmm. and I know all the different inputs and the possible values to give them. So this is really helping me out. So I know you could just check out SOP type. I'm going to input a three if I want to do an invoice. Documentation is pretty important. Yeah. <laughs> so let's go over to my map. I have basically some text data here uh, that has some, some invoices I want to import. Mm -hmm. It's flat, so for one invoice and I have two line items, that's two total lines. And I'm saying for every result that I get, I want to check to see if it's the first row. And I'm going to know that because my source data will tell me this is row one of one or okay. one of two. Okay. And then I'm going to execute that stored procedure. So this is an execute block. And I've went in here and I've found the one that I like. You can see I, I did TASOP and I, I right. still have a lot in here. Right. But if you hadn't have done that filtering and that configuration of the connection, this list would have... You might still be loading it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So for every uh, header that I want to insert, you know, it's just basic field mappings in here. Right. But I know what I want to map into it based okay. on that, that documentation. So I've done that for the header, and if it's not the first row, well, I'm not going to do anything. And the other one here is for the line items. And so you know these are going to map to the items, and it's going to give me the price. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'll host this mapping out there, but this is just basically you know your the line items information okay. in here. So I see you made liberal use of the comment capability. I did. <laughs> <laughs> now I know what I could. I did two yeah. months ago. Yeah. So, you know, when I go out and run it uh, in Scribe Online, this is going to go out. I specified what batch I want this to be a part of. So I'm going right. to create a Nate's batch, of yep. course. Yep. And it's going to go out. It's going to create this invoice. It's going to add the two live items to that. And so we'll be able to check that out over here. So Nate's batch, let's check that out. We'll go, we'll see what transactions are a part of that. So I'm going to look for an invoice. There's my invoice I created. That was the document number mm -hmm. that I actually mm -hmm. assigned to it. And here's my three line items Great. associated with that. Super. Yeah. So I didn't need the, the 2013 connector. That does, you know, it doesn't do invoices. Right. So a part of the documentation, I know I could just change that SOP type. I could do a two or a one, maybe a four. Uh -huh. And that'll go out. Now I've extended. I have a mapping schema for all of that. Terrific. So one of the things that I learned while doing this is when I look at executing a stored procedure, uh, there's only going to be, you know, there's not going to be a yes, it worked or no, it didn't work. So it's going to come back with a return value that's going to tell me if it worked or not. Okay. So in the scribe world, you know, if it doesn't execute, that's an error. But if it executed and didn't do what I wanted it to do, mm -hmm. it doesn't necessarily show up. eConnect doesn't necessarily tell you? Yeah. Okay. So there's actually on all of these stored procedures a return value that comes back, uh, and it could come back with an error number that's a part of it. So that's that integer at the bottom of this list right here? Exactly. That return value field, okay. Yeah. So when I had to troubleshoot my mappings, I was able to look at this integer and actually go into the, the database, the Dynamics database, and figure out what my issue was. Not the company database. Yeah, okay. the, the Dynamics database. Yep. And so what I did, basically, you can go in here, and you can see every single different type of error message from all these error codes and what oh, the okay. description is. All right. I knew I had 2079. So I went in, and I looked, and I, I forgot to close that transaction that I was updating. Right. So that was just a little you know, quick how-to troubleshoot. Yeah. yeah, pretty neat. Yeah. Uh, is there anything else that you uh, wanted to go over? Any other or any special skills people might need to have to make this work? Yeah, I, th I think you just really need to know. You need to know GP if you're going to be in here. Mm -hmm. uh, you, if, if you're importing, you know, line items that have extended prices, what's the other information you might need about that? Right. And so that really just anything they're using eConnect for, just know a little bit about it. And don't forget to use that 
documentation that you showed on MSDN. Was it XML node reference? Yeah. Is that what it was? Yeah. MSDN, just check out that node reference. Okay, great. Well, thank you very much for uh, your time and attention. We hope you found this video useful and hope you come back another time to learn some more tips and tricks from our scribe experts.